I don't went on vacation and came back and your ass still big and unhealthy or both. Girl, what is you waiting on? Drop down in the description box and click this link. And if you drank the damn tea and use it the way it have to be, you wouldn't have to worry about being offended every time the videos come on. Bah! I'm trying to help your asshole. Now, some girl, now let me first start out by telling y'all thank you for whoever that was or the couple of whoever's that was that dropped down on my social media different accounts and told me that the new season of Iyana was back on and that they did follow up with the Dirty Laundry family from before. Because, baby, I sat down here and watched this thing, and I'm not going to tell y'all no lie. I had to go lay down in the bed for an hour and 30 minutes and collect myself because I lost so much <clears throat> watching this show for two hours. I still ain't got it all back. Y'all want to talk about it? Here it goes. so many times before fix my life I'm so disappointed upset and hurt that mama is choosing for whatever reason to end the season I mean to end the series after this season but she has given us a lot and I can't single-handedly say Iyanla Van Zandt is largely responsible for me being the person that I am today because I've been able to help heal some of my own traumas and family issues through her teachings now there's something that I always wanted fix my life and hoarders to do which was go back and follow up with these families because being in television and media y'all I know that these producers first loyalty is to making good TV they can care less than the hell about these goddamn people being healed now Iyanla might personally care about it and their intentions might have been good when they set out to do these shows but them folks don't get paid based on them people being healed they pay they get paid based on getting ratings and so I was always curious to know after filming a show for two or three days was that really enough to heal a lot of these people I'm going to go out on a limb and say most of these people probably still at home with the same damn problems that they were having before. Um, or whatever the case may be, just with a little more self-awareness and some tools. But hey, shit, we know if you're following up with the people more, than, more damn often than not, maybe since Iyana Van Zandt ass going off, maybe y'all could just do a show where y'all follow up with the people and let them fuss and call it love and hip hop. Okay, nevertheless. I always wanted them and hoarders, I especially want hoarders to go do a follow-up with the people and see if their house is still nasty in the words of Juanita Dyke and Bottom. I mean Dyke and Bottom. But she might be a Dyke and Bottom too, depending on if she's the strap on or the scrappy. But that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. This show opens up, and the first thing we find out is the light skinned no neck having twins ain't there or whatever the case may be. I'm curious to know why they were not there, but something in my spirit told me they just didn't want to go and participate because they was being bitches, or whatever the case may be. I hope not. It was also disappointing to figure out that Jamil didn't do her homework. Now, Jamil, you was the one sitting up in there with the most damn problems. You was the one sitting up in there with the most the damn gain from the situation. And you had no waste to eat y'all the time to just went, went right back there and, 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 and set your frumpity ass on a damn chair, on the sofa. Now look, you had time to go get your hair fixed all nice, to get it all braided and thrown to the side and get it shaved. You had time for that shit, okay? And obviously you had enough time to eat, you and your husband both. You need to get some of this tea at the beginning of this video. But you didn't have the time to go follow up with the therapist and to do the types of things that you need to do to really get your life on track. Then you want to sit here and holler about, you know, oh, I need to do these things and I need to get this on track and yada, 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 yada. Pause for the cause. This is to everybody. I was driving the other day and I was thinking about doing a video for this. Listen to me carefully, daughters. Every problem you have in your life is a resource. Period, hard stop. Everything that is wrong with you, your life, 
your relationship, there is a resource. Everything that's wrong with your finances, your education, your house, your car, your foot, your bike, your neck and your bike, there is a resource to help you. You heard the old adage, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You have to be willing to take the step to get the resource. And if you don't know what the resource is, there's a resource for that. Okay? You need, you need some type of therapy. You don't know what type of therapy you need. Which therapist to call, bitch? Open up your phone book. Get on Google. Call any damn therapist's office. Tell them what you're going through and they will point you to the type of therapy you need. Oh no, you don't need child therapy. You need uh, domestic violence therapy. That's a whole other genre. You need love and relationship therapy. You need postpartum therapy. You don't know, but the reality of the situation is and the moral of the story is there is a resource for everything that is wrong with you. I can tell you what the answer is not doing. Sitting on the damn sofa, soaking in your sorrows, drinking, um, watching TV, and I'm gonna tell y'all something else that y'all ain't gonna like me for and I don't give a good goddamn. Your pastor is not the answer, all right? Now, unless your pastor, unless your pastor has an educational background in certain types of therapies, he is a good added support system to help fortify whatever it is you need. But if he don't have the education in it, or whatever the case may be, that's fine and well. And yes, I understand prayer changes things and spirituality and this, that, and the third. But I'll also leave you with this. The slaves pray too. And they, the slaves pray too. And for 400 years, they passed, I ain't had an answer. Now, I ain't gonna take it down there because y'all gonna get mad with me and wanna cuss me and all that. And, 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 and I, we ain't finna go there today. This one need y'all the thing. Um, so they bring out the grandma. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. When the last thing left off, I was mad with that grandma. I thought she was gonna be like Lisa Ray Mama. I thought she was gonna be ornery and mean and nasty because she told that girl she didn't like her and she thought she was doing something. See, that's something that I had to unlearn in my own whatever because I came from a place where people, uh, you know, my mother, my grandmother, other people in my family, you know, they wore as a badge of honor. I'm going to say what I want to say and cut a bitch down. That, that's just how I am. I keeps it real. And I had to learn the very hard way through failed relationships and people choosing not to fuck up with my ass that you cannot go around saying whatever the fuck you want to say to people. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. It's not right. And it doesn't make you strong. It makes you bold. It actually makes you weak as hell. Because it suggests that you can't handle your own whatever you got going on so you gonna cut somebody else down. And that's how you harness in that energy. That's some weak bitch shit. And I had to learn that. Um, but... And Yama did a very good job of presenting that the real conflict between the mama and the wife as it results to the daddy is that the relationship was set up where the, 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 the daddy was the mama's emotional husband and basically he cheated on the mama with the wife and that's why the mama was forever mad with the wife because that bitch is the other woman and the child that she bore for him was the other woman's child the mistress's child the side piece's child sound like real love and marriage Huntsville uh, Arianne Melanie Martell right about now it's on the same network that made sense to me and I think once it made sense I think once Iyana verbalized it it made sense to them and I think they began to realize we ain't even got no real beef. I mean, after 19 years, y'all probably do. Um, but I did get upset at first when the grandma was like, you know, oh, you know, we tried to be friendly with her in the beginning and whatever the case may be, shit, like she didn't come around us. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Because no matter how a person come in the picture, it don't take 19 years to get building rapport with somebody. It don't take 19 years to build a rapport and to get some sort of a level of understanding with somebody. 19 years is a long damn time. It wasn't a whole lot of trying, but again, the grandmother was open to the process and you didn't know what you didn't know. Um, when the grandma broke down, when the Yana was explaining to the grandmother just everything, the emotional husband part, you know, him feeling the band and so on and so forth, and she broke down, that was the first time when I broke down. 
But I appreciated her breakdown because grandma was open to the grandma. Grandma was the most open to the process than everybody. You know, a lot of times you get these grandmothers on there, these older people on there, when you start telling them what they did to you in the past, they want to refute it and they want to debunk it and they want to ask stuff. Grandma just sat there and took it. Grandma put her big girl panties on and she took it. And what I imagine grandma is in search of is peace. You know, you get to a certain point, obviously at her age, she had to have a realization and come to an epiphany that the way I was doing it ain't working. And it ain't working because I'm as old as I am right now and I still don't have no peace. So let me just shut up and surrender to the process. And that's what she did. And for that reason alone, I think the grandma will get a large benefit of healing from this whole situation. Um, Iyanla talking to the older brother. You know, that was very telling. It was very sad when he described his upbringing. Then when the younger sister and brother broke down and started crying and started yelling, that's when I lost it. I had to pause and go walk the dogs for a minute. I completely fell out crying, snot coming out my nose like Viola Davis when she'd be crying because it hurt me. And I don't even know them damn people, but it hurt me because I was able to see the hurt on them. Now I'm going to tell you something. There were times during this TV show where I wanted to slap the shit out of the 17-year-old boy. I'm trying my hardest with him. I really am. Like I get it that you're going through something, but the little bitch is disrespectful and rude. Okay? He just rude and big and disrespectful. And I suggest, and, 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 and like y'all have said, can't nobody tell him nothing. Baby, the one part that had me hollering is after he had said, suck his dick and ran out down the street. Bitch, y'all got to cuss it out the damn daddy. She said, I ain't finna run behind him. That's your damn problem. You go do it. I said, that's right, baby. Auntie Iyana had not had enough of that shit, but she brought up a very valid point. Can't nobody say nothing to him. We later found out that him escaping was the mama, you know, had told him in the past to escape before you get into trouble and do something bad. But Iyana had to come back and let her know, well, he did something bad, then escaped. It just was a bad situation. I'm with the older sister Ashley. Um, I definitely think that those two, the youngest two children, they are old enough now to understand certain things. Their reluctance to not understand why he left that was selfish. Not only was it selfish, it was selfish as hell. Because all they were saying is you left me, you left me, you left me. And the reality of the situation is the very things that y'all are bitching about is the same things that he was enduring times 10 and y'all ass want to go. Y'all want to leave. So the fact that y'all can't understand why he left, that was a little troubling for me. But I also understand that they're probably only, you know, dealing with the situation from their level of emotional and mental maturity. And for that, we give them a pass. I'm glad to know that they finally did come around to understanding and seeing things his way. Um... Mark talks about having to beg, borrow, and steal for the mama, but then you left. And when Yiyanga said, and lowered your integrity, that was another one of those things that hit, because you're right, I begged, borrowed, and, steal, and stole for, for whatever reason you were unable to provide fully, so I stepped in. Then the minute something came along, I'm not going to say something better came along, but the minute something came along, you abandoned me for it when I didn't abandon you. That was powerful. That was powerful. And then also him bringing in that wife and making her a part of the family without really consulting with the mother was really him subconsciously getting back at her shit. You did the same thing to me. You set up house, you set up shop over here with, and, and didn't consult me or care how I felt. And then allowed your husband to tell you that your son could not stay there. Now I'm gonna tell you something, there's a special place in hell for women like you. I never understood how somebody could push something out of their body, something could grow in them, and they let a, a man tell them their child is not welcome, or they sit back and let a man mistreat their child, so on and so forth. There are several people close to me who have shared things with me, both friend guys of mine. Some I've heard verbally, others I've witnessed, um, some family members I've witnessed, where their moms have, you know, acquiesced to some man. Um, at the expense of their child. I just have no respect for it. 
I'd rather me and my child struggle in a homeless shelter than for me to let some Negro come along and treat my child like sloppy seconds. I'd rather sell pussy, uh, even though mine made a clay. I'd rather sell this pussy all up and down Biscayne Boulevard and back. All up and down 95, baby. Y'all ain't seen the type of prostitution I do, bitch. I had a ass on the motherfucking expressway. See, the y'all hoes be on the street. Baby, I show them something new, baby. It ain't no competition on the side of the road, baby. Yes, God, honey, I have my car. I have my car on the side of the expressway with my hazard lights on, with my poom poom shorts. I bent over and advertised this ass to the whole damn I-95. Oh, baby, we gonna eat and be just fine. Honey, we ain't even got to go to no hotel, baby. We'll do it right here in this car. Yes, God, honey, that's the way my booty set up. Okay, I do anything for my children. Anything. Except let no man mistreat me or them. Okay, but he can... Quentin, just stop while you're ahead. Stop while you're ahead. Um... When Iyana was sitting down talking with the three daughters, three daughters, or talking with all the women, I imagined or I felt like Ashley was gaining the most from the process. Now, Ashley was talking about her three daughters, and she broke down crying and saying she's having issues with her oldest daughter, and Iyana pointed out to her the pathology of the family. Hopefully, Ashley's daughters, the older one in particular, will watch the show and get a better understanding. And Ashley will have some better tools to better deal with her daughter. Let them kids go to other people's house occasionally. They old enough now where they can tell that something happened to them. Um, the wife saying that she was on the outskirts of the house and what was going on was very telling for me. And it was also kind of sad because basically she was just sitting back and allowing life to happen to her and not having any control over the parenting or anything because the husband was so controlling. That's what I got from her saying that she was just on the outskirts. Um, the baking ceremony was something serious, y'all. Um, we got to get back to our roots, y'all. We got to figure out what they are. I, I've been telling them there's resources. We need to use some of these resources and get back to our roots. While I was not present, I felt it. Um, the way that grown woman was left in that vulnerable fetal position, the way she was, I could tell the ancestors moved through her. Those women sucked that bad energy out and put that healing black woman um, mamba energy on them and, and really helped we got to get back to that. We got to get back to that. We got to get find a way to get back to that because that was some powerful shit. And I could just imagine what that could do for a lot of people, man, woman, and flower pot. Um, quiet as his cat I need somebody to bake me and flip me over when I'm done and fuck me. Well, that's a whole other story for a whole other video. I'm not going to get too raunchy on this thing. But just hurry up and get to the flip me over I'm done part. Um, and hit it from the body. Make it feel all the way good, honey. I didn't say that part. Um, the grandma and the son talk. Well, I touched on that already. Uh, the daughters talk with Iyana about the molestation. Or whatever the case may be. Um, and then all the women come to the table to talk. And the grandma was apologetic to everybody. That was really, 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 really good. Um, the only thing that I didn't like in closing is when they got to the very last scene where they were talking all the village with the son. Once again, Jordan, the 17 year old, he's sitting back looking like he just don't want to fucking be there. Where I come from, somebody would turn around and tell him, fix your face. Fix your damn face and sit out. That's what Queen Mother needed to do on her new revelation. And lastly, I'm going to ask y'all this. Do y'all think they need to stay married? Like, Part of me feeling like too much damage and too much trauma has been done and that y'all are just working hard to, 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 to put something together that maybe should be broken apart. You know what I'm saying? I think that maybe a, a separation would actually probably do them some good. You know what I'm saying? Just to separate for a little bit and figure out if they still want to be together. I mean, Jamil let it be known she don't even know herself. And Mark let it be known that he have an issue of, uh, if, uh, 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 issue of rescuing bitches. Or whatever the case may be. I obviously think a separation would do them some good. But all in all, this was a great episode of Fix My Life. Iyama has done it again. 
Y'all, that's all I got. Ain't got no more. Be sure to drop down in these comments and let's talk about it. Don't forget my Instagram page is still disabled. I'm working to try to get it back, but if I don't, it ain't the end of the world. They can't hold a good woman down. I just start another one and we'll rebuild our tribe on IG. As long as I got you on YouTube, that's all that matters, Nessa girl. And I'll call y'all later. Bye.